اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلاۃ و سلام علی سیدنا و نبینا و طبیب نفوسنا و حبیب قلوبنا ابل قاسم محمد اللہم صلی علی محمد و آل محمد صلی اللہ علیہ و آلہ و سلم لا سیما بقیت اللہ روحی و ارواح العالمین لمقدمه الفداء Respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum jami'an wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi alladhi hadana lihada wa ma kunna linahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. We are still in the uh, first station of the journey towards inshallah proximity with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nearness to God step by step. By the grace of God, tonight we are going to put a closure in discussion about the first station, that is the station of al yaghdi or waking up, or awakening. Please remember, and I want to reiterate again and again, that if you only attend this series of talks, taking notes, attending, listening, not that it's not helpful, it will help partially, but you will not reap much benefit from it unless, inshallah, we will put it into practice. Perhaps one hour a week we get together, the rest of the week we have to really reflect on what we have discussed and work on it. And from now it's very easy. Imagine that we have just started the course and if you don't do your assignments and you leave it to the exam night, then it's going to be too much and you may not get a good mark. There is no such things for us, but uh, I'm saying that uh, please spend more time during the week on what uh, will be discussed here. Uh, the topic, inshallah, for tonight is about the signs of being awake. Of course, the list is quite long. I have chosen for tonight some necessary signs to check with ourselves. You know, when you go to a doctor and they want to examine whether, God forbid, you have certain kind of disease or not, there are some symptoms that they check. If you meet all those symptoms, they tell you that, yes, uh, possibly you will have that kind of uh, virus in, in you or any kind of uh, disease. Uh, the, side, the positive side of it is also the same. Tonight we want to see whether I'm awake or not, checking some of the necessary signs, the most necessary signs. The very first one, Arafah, they say the very first sign of checking whether you are awake or you are still a sleepwalker, remember the expression of the sleepwalkers we talk about, is see whether how appreciative you are. When it comes to the graces of God upon you, apparent graces and hidden graces. Let me explain it, inshallah. Grace in English is quite similar to ni'ma in Arabic. And ni'ma is called the ni'ma or blessing of the translated grace. I checked the terminology and the grace makes more sense closer to the Arabic term and ni'ma because grace in Arabic it means if someone has done you a favor without you expecting and or deserving it at all you have not done anything to him at all and they are not expecting anything at all yet you see that they have come out of their way and done something to you I was walking to the mosque today and I saw a lady pushing the pram uh, of, of twin, perhaps because I had twins once upon a time, that reminded me of the old days. Nevertheless, I said to myself as I was walking, I said, Ya Rab, no way a mother will be suffered in, in your hell. A mother who has been really going through the, the pain of pregnancy, the pang of delivery, breastfeeding, all the hardship. Ya Rab, these ladies, they have been moms, they have been uh, like looking after your trust, your creation, babies. And the love and affection, the sacrifice of a mother, quite similar father, of course, as well. The sacrifice of the fathers, uh, or, or parents, better to say, towards their children is not, no father ever think that I'm doing this for my son or for my daughter because come in the future that they will reciprocate that. No mother would ever breastfeed her baby thinking that one day will come that she's going to take my hand and he's going to help me, huh? It, it, it's just a natural love because we say the love of a mother towards her her child, her children, is the manifestation of divine mercy and rahma. And hence we call it Silatul Rahim. Rahim and Rahma, mercy, come from the same root. By the way, grace from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestows his, uh, his like, blessings, 
shower his blessings upon us without us paying anything to it and deserving it. And I'll give you some examples and inshallah quote an ayah from the Quran as well to see how this issue of uh, appreciation of the blessing is. The air that we are breathing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have made the heavens and the earth available to you, possibly subjugated to you. Let me share the ayah. Alam taraw anna Allah has sakhara lakum ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard. Don't you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has subjugated all that is in the heavens and all that is in the earth, that you can fly above all the, all the birds, and you can dive into the water, more down into the water than any fish, and you can just penetrate through the, the mountains, make a tunnel and go through them. God has made the nature subjugated uh, to you, that you can manipulate the nature the way that would suit you, okay? Asbagh, asbagh, it means look, look at this glass of water, a miracle of Sheikh Mansur tonight, simple miracle. This glass of water, it's not complete. A little bit of it has been drunk. If, it's, if somebody is pouring, like Hussein was pouring the water on the, into the glass, if it's completely full, that is almost overflowing, then we say that asbagh al ma, yani you pour the water, that the cup is full, completely full. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, asbagh alaykum ni'ama. All his graces, all his blessings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala poured upon you, completed it on you. That nothing is lacking. Whatever you deserve and more than what you deserve, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given it to you. Zahiratan wa batina. Apparent, the blessings, physical, uh, you know, blessings that God has given you. And the hidden one, one of the examples of the hidden one is, for example, it comes to your spirituality. When it comes to your, there are so many factors behind you and I living. And I always give this example. Imagine that you are traveling on a road and luck is a mountainous road. From the top of the mountain, there are some, I don't know, bandits, some thieves that they are shooting, some that they are shooting to kill you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or somebody has put some protection. You are driving comfortably, enjoying the breeze, don't realize that there is a shooting coming to you every second because it's a protection. You don't feel it at all. This is hidden. Because you don't see it, you don't realize it, but it's there. The moment that the protection is removed, oh my God, all of a sudden I'm diagnosed with a dying disease. Isn't it? وَأَسْبَغَ عَلَيْكُمْ نِعَمَهُ ظَاهِرَةً وَبَاطِنَةً God says that I, I have just put you into the ocean of blessings. Yet, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يُجَادِلُ فِي اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ وَلَا هُدًا وَلَا كِتَابٍ مُنِينٍ مُنِير Yet, you see that some people come, keep complaining, complaining, complaining. I have a question for you. Please reflect on this later on. Go back home tonight, review your life, however your life is, and ask yourself, Ya Fulan, Ya Fulane. Call yourself and say that, are you a nagger? Are you a type of person that you keep nagging, nagging, nagging? Why God? Why God? If you and I are type of people that we keep nagging and complaining to God, why me? Why this is happening to me? I haven't hurt anyone. I haven't done anything wrong. God, if you ask or if you are questioning God, astaghfir, not you ask, you are questioning God. If you are questioning God, that means that you don't appreciate the blessings that God has given you. Apparent or hidden. People like this, they are not shakirin. Brothers and sisters, I have a question for you, simple question. What is the difference between a kafir and a mu'min? Do you know fundamentally, essentially, the reason a kafir is called a kafir, why? Kafir is the one who is unappreciative. Al-Kufr is opposite of Ash-Shukr. Shukr, it means being appreciative. Shakir is the one who's, who appreciates. Kafir is the one who is not appreciating. Kafir is the one who drinks the water that God has provided for free, yet he denies the provider. Kafir is the one who goes to the shop, to the fish market, buys the fish, not realizing that the fish in the ocean were provided free by the Creator. 
It's humans selling them to each other. God did not charge us when he puts the fish in the, in the ocean. We could go to the fish and free uh, fishing. Governments may charge you. Businessmen may, may charge you. But God doesn't charge you. God provides it for free. All the fruits provided for free. There are parts, I was told even here in, in Copenhagen, that you can go free, fruits available, as much as you want to enjoy it. God provides for free. And yet man nags, keeps nags. Kafir is the one who takes the blessings of God. Someone gives him a glass of water, says thank you. But God provided the actual water, he doesn't say thank you to God. Quran says, God says, then he is kafir. He is unappreciative. So kafir, Kafir is the one who is not appreciating the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him. I give you one example. There are so much. I, I, I really want to remember why we are bringing this topic. Because we want to, to wake up to ourselves in our relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If this part of the glass is empty, look at the part that is full and appreciate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam says that it is impossible for me to be grateful to you, Ya Rab. Because shukri iyaq yahtaju ila shukr. If I want to open my mouth and say alhamdulillah, I need another alhamdulillah for ability of being able to say alhamdulillah. It's a vicious, it's a regress, it's impossible for me to be grateful to you. Day and night, the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Muhammad wa Muhammad. Very often, some of the wives of the Prophet have narrated late at night we see that or at dawn the Prophet is like has removed the, the carpet or mattress, whatever that is in the house, on the, on the floor, on, on the dirt, doing the sajda, weeping and crying. And she says, I went to the Prophet and said, Ya Rasulallah, what are you doing to yourself? You are forgiven, you are the, like, on the best place of paradise. You are Qasim al Jannah, what are you doing? The Prophet says, Afala akuna abdan shakura. Am I not supposed to be grateful? So the more awake, the more vigilant we are, the more we're supposed to be grateful to God. The more we're supposed to do sajda to shukr constantly. I know one lady, Rahmatullah alayha, alay she passed away. No matter what, no matter what in her life, Every time you ask her, you say, Alhamdulillah, please do me a favor. When you go to Mashhad, you go to Karbala, you go to those holy places, if possible, please, all what I need from you, to rakat salat shukr on my behalf. Because I cannot thank God enough for what he has given me. I cannot thank God enough. I feel so embarrassed and so humbled before God. When I consider some of the blessings that he has bestowed upon me, and I don't deserve any of them. So let us have, the, this is a sign of being awake. One of the signs of being awake is to see in practice, in our life, how grateful we are to God in, in however it is. The Holy Prophet wasalam, was always saying, Alhamdulillah, happy days or sad days. Because the days of your lives are all are happy days or sad days. When it was happy occasion, the Prophet said, Alhamdulillah. When it was a sad occasion, supposedly a loss, he would say, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. So remember this phrase from the Prophet, you succeeded in what you wanted to do, you achieved something, Alhamdulillah. It seems that you failed, again, Alhamdulillah, ala kulli hal. Because this is Quran says, Ni'amahu zahiratan wa batina. Zahiruhu min qibalihi al-adha wa batinuhu fihi al-rahma. Quran says, any hardship in your life, it looks like torturing you. It looks like difficult. Why am I going through this, God? God, really, it hurts. God says, behind this, if you read between the lines, inside it, there is a mercy for, it, for you. There is a benefit for you in it. Your growth depends on that. So always we have to be grateful to God. I usually give an example of, what is this that... Uh, oh. I opened the, the wrong one. Anyone knows this uh, 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 this expression? Do we have again medical student here? Urethral, yeah, mashallah, asan. Urethral catheterization. 
catheter, inshallah, you never need to experience that. A friend of mine, actually, one day he came to me. Uh, he's a businessman. He said, Sheikh Mansour, early in the morning, I realized that already I've made a couple of hundreds of dollars. I said, what do you mean? He said, because last night my dad had a problem of uh, like uh, discharging uh, urine, he, his bladder, uh, like he couldn't do it naturally. We took him to the doctor and prescriptions went to the chemist and came and it, it cost me $120 just for my dad to naturally uh, discharge his uh, or uh, uh, empty his bladder. I said to myself, subhanAllah, how merciful the Almighty God is. All my life, imagine that every time that you are emptying your, your bladder, if it's costing you $120, how much do I owe God? I'm sorry to give you this example, but it's not, you don't need to be sorry. It's a very, and it's very eye-opening example. This is a blessing. So many numerous such blessings that we take them for, for granted. Because look, we have taken them for free. Allahu Akbar. That's why the Rawayat says that when you are even like answering your nature, say, Ya laha min raha, o alhamdulillah. Even somebody came to Imam Sadiq alayhi salam said, is it okay when I'm in the bathroom to say alhamdulillah? Imam says that of course it's okay. Dhikrullahi hasanun ala kulli hal. In any situation that you are, it's okay to be always grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is also a ni'mah and blessing from the Almighty God. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Now, when we say to be grateful to God, it's not enough to say, yes, Sheikh, I always say Alhamdulillah. I'm holding a sabha and I always say Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Is this enough? I don't know whether I should give you an example or not. I tell them that this is enough, if also is enough to always say that Ankahto muwakilati or Ankahto wa zawajto wa qabilto. Zawajto wa qabilto is the formula for zawaj. It's not a zawaj. Marriage, this is not a marriage, it's a formula for marriage. Likewise, Alhamdulillah, as a dhikr is good. But the actual dhikr is not this. This is the formula for being grateful to God. If I want to see whether, my eye, whether I'm awake or not, yes, it starts with verbalizing it. Like marriage, it starts with verbalizing the marriage, but then you need to get married. Therefore, Imam Amir al-Mu'mani sallallahu alayhi says, Shukrun ni'ma ijtinabu al-maharim. If you want to see you're grateful to the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you or not, one of the blessings is eyes. In Arabic, they refer to eyes as karima, karimatan. Huh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored you with your eyes, subhanAllah. It has been so generous to you with your eyes that you enjoy. Sense of, senses. If you want to see, we are grateful to, your, to the blessings of eyes. If I'm abusing my eyes, if I'm looking at something that I'm not supposed to look, that means I am kafir, not shakir. Kafir in literal sense of it. I'm not being grateful to this blessing. Subhanallah, one of my teachers in, in Irfan, still he's alive, one of the maraja, hafizahullah, he was saying that often we may suffer, even we lose our sight as a result of having lustful look on scenes that we are not supposed to see. Because God says, it seems you don't need these, uh, this blessing. Because you're abusing it. You and I, how much do we appreciate if you give money to someone to spend it for something, you entrust him. He said that, look brother, I entrusted you with this money, do business for me. And then you see he's abusing your money. Don't you take your money back? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar, may God wake us to ourselves. God one day may come and God says that, it seems that you don't appreciate what I've given you, I should take it back. Because you are abusing it. Shukrun ni'ma ijtinabul maharim. Inshallah, this is enough for, for the first one. The second. The second is attending my previous sins. The second sign of being awake is, uh, and inshallah, we'll get to the next station, delve more into this. The second sign of being awake is that I need to spend some time and collect all the previous sins for the sake of burning them, attending, identifying them, identifying your sins. Let me tell you a story that once upon a time, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the companions, uh, they, they were going on a journey. They reached a, a land, a barren land. In Arabic, they call it Ardun Qara'ah. 
Ardun Qara'a, that means that a barren land, that there was no vegetation, there was no tree apparently. They camped there, the Prophet says that, brothers, let's go collect some firewood and make fire to make some food. They say, Ya Rasulallah, nahnu bi Ardun Qara'a. There is no tree around here to collect firewood. The Prophet says, Ya Allah, as Leban say, Malish, may khalif, yani, let's, let's try. Go different directions and let's collect something. Subhanallah, a couple of hours later, a mountain of firewood was, was made. And they made a very yummy uh, barbecue perhaps there. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, as he was sitting with them, he said that that's how your sins are. You look at the, like, at the barren land of your life, I don't think I've done anything so confidently, Allah Akbar. Really, I don't know how to explain this. Often, people who come for consultation, he or she, Sheikh, I haven't done anything wrong. So confidently, Allah Akbar. That shows we are asleep. That, that shows we are so ignorant if I think that I have not. Because as, a, as humans, we have this hubbud that that naturally we love ourselves. We are brilliant, genius when it comes to justifying our deeds. And subhanAllah, on the contrary, we are the dumbest when it comes to justifying others' action. So easy we nitpick on others, and subhanAllah, so genius we are in justifying what we are doing. Is it not? If we have this attitude, that means we are still asleep. We have to turn the table. المؤمن ظنون عند نفسه. مؤمن is the one who is always like accusing himself, not others. Maybe I did something that my wife got upset. Before I'll be upset with her, before I complain about her, I should think what did I do that she reacted like this. Likewise, she should also say, what, did I do anything wrong that my husband now is treating me like this? I must have done. If we really always turn the table towards ourselves, identify your sins, the more the better. Because the more you collect, the, the more you can bend and, and free them. The second, admitting them. There are different ways when it comes to the sins. One is to justify it, or the first is to deny it. No, no, I, I didn't do it, deny it. No, I'm not, this, I have not reached the station of uh, repentance and tawbah. Second attitude towards it is to justify it. And as I said, we are brilliant in that. Justify, justify, justify. It wasn't my fault, Sheikh, I didn't have the best father. You know, my dad was a drug addict. You know, my, uh, my, uh, peer, it was a peer pressure. You know, you know, you know. So excuses after excuses, still I'm asleep, I'm fooling myself. Admitting said that yes, it was my fault and I do not justify and I admit it. If I admit it, half of the repentance is done. Then magnify them. In the Islamic ethics or akhlaq, ilm al-akhlaq, we divide or our ulama, they divide all the sins into two main categories. Mortal sins, minor sins. Dhunub al-kabira, dhunub al-saghira, isn't it? This division is relative when we are comparing the sins together. Not that in reality we have like uh, minor sins and mortal sins. Rahmatullah alayhi, Imam Khomeini, he says that if sins means transgression to God, disobeying God, any kind of disobedience to God is, is mortal is great and is big. So you need to magnify. Don't ever say that, Ya Laita Zunubi, I wish that it was only this. Anytime, sometimes, have you seen, there somebody comes, comments, Baba, brother, do you know what they are doing? And you, you are concerned about this. I wish all the sins were like this. So far as I have this attitude towards myself, I'm not going to improve. So. We are, remember, we are talking about the signs of being awake. The person, the one who is awake is the one, he or she, that any sins that they have committed in the past, they magnify it. It sounds horrible to them. They are very much concerned about it. And finally, rectifying them. Now that I identify it, I admitted it, I magnified it, now I need to rectify it. How to rectify, I give you a quick example, maybe in the future we'll speak more about it, but one quick example. Muslims, non-Muslims, there's always ways to uh, rectify a, pro a, a mistake that we have done in the past. 
I don't know if I've mentioned this here uh, in, during Muharram uh, occasions or not. I had a friend still, uh, not a Muslim uh, friend. He has uh, uh, like established a foundation in Australia that all life matters. What he is doing, he has employed counselors, and that's how I came to know about him uh, to help him with the Muslim community. That he is sending counselors to young, usually young ladies who are considering abortion. Abortion is a mortal sin. Killing an innocent baby who has done nothing wrong just because mom is so selfish or mom and dad were so selfish or oops happened, now they want to get rid of a human being. And there are some repercussions, some uh, consequences, by the way, to them later on. He said to once, he said to me that, Sheikh, do you know why I have established this foundation? I said, why? He said, because when I was young, I used to have, with all respect to this gathering, I used to have a girlfriend. And we ended up having a child, unexpected child. And because we didn't want, we didn't want to have a child, I told her and we agreed to abort the baby. After that, and up until now, more than 20 years have passed, a feeling of guilt is killing me. I always feel that that baby is just holding my neck and wants to kill me. I say, why did you kill me, Dad? And that girlfriend, my, my, my girlfriend, God knows what happened to her, also depression and everything else. Then later on in my life, and I, she, he's not a Muslim, I decided, I said, I'm uh, responsible for killing one innocent human. What I want to do is to save humans, innocent humans. And that's why I made this foundation, All Life Matters. Whether it's a true marriage, permanent marriage, temporary marriage, whatever it is, all life matters. I've made this foundation, all life matters. And yes, this is my rectification for the, like, the mess that I had made uh, earlier in my life. I saved so many lives. I counseled so many ladies who wanted to uh, abort and, and miscarry their, their babies. So we have to somehow find rectification. Every sin has its own rectification. It's not just enough to say astaghfirullah. Inshallah, we'll talk about it more in the future. Sallallahu Muhammad wa Muhammad. couple of more quickly. This one I had touched on it before. I just remind you, be a successful businessman or a businesswoman. This kind of business that I'm introducing to you is the business that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Tijaratan lan tabur. Shunu tijaratan lan tabur. There is a business that is loss free. I'm inviting you to a business, to a partnership that is loss free. Who doesn't want to get to that business? Absolutely loss free. Business with God. What kind of business is this? I tell you in a minute. I touched on this before. A successful businessman and a businesswoman is that they don't put their money somewhere that there's a risk of losing it. They don't put their money somewhere unless there is a return, good return. Am I making any sense to businessmen? Unless there's a good return, they don't invest on it. The sign of being awake is that Imam al-Kazim alayhi salam says, لَيْسَ لَأَنفُسِكُمْ ثَمَنٌ إِلَّا الْجَنَّةِ فَلَا تَبِيعُوهَا إِلَّا بِهَا Habibi, my friend, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, your price is not less than paradise. Don't sell yourself for less than paradise. What does it mean? You, you, who are you? You are the combination of 60, 70, 80, and inshallah, 120 years of life. That is you. 100 years of your life in dunya will provide, will sell it, and you'll gain paradise forever. Forever. Think of eternity. Forever. Now, Quran says, if you convert every minute of your life into a krona, into dollar, any currency you wish, and that will be your investment. That will be your capital. I, I spoke about this before. Don't invest your capital unless in return you get paradise or a path to paradise. Why are we sitting here on Saturday night? With all respect, why didn't we decide to go to the city? Do you have city? Do you have nightclubs here? Do you have wrong places to hang around? Because you said that this capital that I have, this one hour that I have, I rather spend it something somewhere that the return is good. I don't want to lose it. Because if you go somewhere else, not only wrong places, not only we lose the capital, 
couple of hours not only we lose it saharat gaade hours of hours of just chit chat chit chat chit chat chit chat until oh it's three o'clock better go back home saturday night typical youth not your guys inshallah and what did i get in return come on sheikh i was bored I, I, or spending hours and hours wasting time on the net really at the end you see what did i achieve nothing because i was bored i don't ever remember in my life alhamdulillah rabbil alamin ever been bored those who say that they are bored they are asleep if you know what you have to do if you know how long the journey is allahu akbar i want to mention this and really every time i read this part of uh, the dua amirul mu'mini get a goosebump you know what the goosebump is get a goosebump amirul mu'mini says ah ah min qillat az-zad wa bu'd as-safar painfully like someone who is bitten by a snake is crying painfully says how little my provision is subhanallah an imam that used to spend often 1000 rak'at prayers 1000 wells he had made and donated allah akbar yes says how little my provision is i'm empty handed and how long the journey is how can one say that on board my friend that means I'm asleep. If I'm really truly awake, then I make use of every minute of my life for my akhara. Remember this hadith, please. Your price is paradise. Don't sell yourself for less than that. And finally, don't trust yourself. This is again a very contrary concept as we are told in the West, unfortunately. I... I like her mother is telling her that don't go there don't hang around with such mom don't you trust me have you ever heard of this mom don't you trust me dad don't you trust me trust don't worry i trust myself that's how shaitan is fooling us don't ever trust your nafs don't ever trust your temptation inside you okay let us learn from I, this ayah of the quran some mufassirin they say is from yusuf and nabi prophet yusuf some they say is a zulaikha either way i don't believe it's a, a yusuf but anyway there are some eminent mufassirin that they claim this is what yusuf has said the lesson is important for us i never free myself from any blame i don't say that no i'm so come on i'm a sheikh i'm an old man i'm alhamdulillah okay i'm not gonna commit this sin you never know my friend bigger sheikh than me have slept more pious than you and i have slept don't ever say that i trust myself you don't know Man don't go to the gray area going to the gray area is possible to sleep stay in the middle of the road don't trust yourself it's shaitan fooling us telling you that don't worry he's a good guy don't worry trust don't you trust yourself i know i can look after myself no you cannot bigger people than you could not look after themselves and therefore one of the signs of being awake is elite being vigilant if you know the term vigilant being a bit vigilant a vigilant person is the one who is more cautious and always says that better safe than sorry brother you and i are not supposed to be alone here because you are not mahram no matter who you are because we are not allowed two people the riwayat says that the third will be shaitan don't say that no we trust ourselves bigger people than you and i could not uh, trust themselves could not help it one assignment inshallah i have for you for uh, the coming week please do me a favor and start with yourself doing this assignment it's number five the first four we have passed them i deliberately keep them ask five people how would you spend the rest of your life if you found out that you suffer an incurable fatal disease la samahalla but whether I say La Samahallah or not, that's a story of life. And you don't need to be in your 80s to get this, uh, this kind of disease. What would happen to you? Really go home tonight and write for yourself that khalas, if all of a sudden I found out that I'm diagnosed with an incurable fatal disease. I don't want to name any disease to, uh, to uh, depress anyone. Variety of diseases that is absolutely today, medicine has no cure for them. 
and no one has immunity, isn't it? No one knows all of the sudden. Could be as young as a, like a young boy, a young kid, or as an old person. What would you truly do if the doctors tell you that, look, my friend, you've got only a couple of months to live. How would you spend the next two months of your life? Write something for yourself, and please, either through the email, Alhamdulillah, you know how to communicate with others. Send it to some five random people, Muslims and non-Muslims. Tell them that I have an assignment. There is, a, I don't know, the, the, uh, the uh, funny sheikh has come to our town, and he's asked me to do this assignment. How would you spend the next couple of months of your life if you know that you are only going to live until the end of, let's say, March 2017. By the end of March 2017, you will expire. How would you live your life? Ask non-Muslims and ask some Muslims as well. And inshallah, we will next week, we we'll read some of the, uh, the answers that you have received, inshallah. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Next Saturday will be coinciding with the anniversary of the birth, uh, sorry, the, the martyrdom anniversary of Sayyidina Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu alayhi according to one narration. We have two famous narrations. One is the uh, 13th of Jamad al-Ula, another one is the 3rd of Jamad al-Sani. Uh, so next Saturday will be the first uh, narration for the Shahada of Fatima to Zahra. Uh, 11th of February, uh, inshallah, we'll have a special occasion here in English. I haven't got a chance to speak with Sayyid Daniel. There might be another one on Friday in Danish as well, but we'll keep our practical irfan. Usually when we uh, hit the major occasions, we'll make it for that occasion, and especially the occasion of the Shahada of Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayhi Question that I have for you now is that uh, pray time, as you can see, days are uh, getting longer. Is the timing suitable for you to keep it after prayer, or you prefer to keep it before prayer for next week and from next week, or at least for next week? Next week, I think by the time we finish Maghrib uh, prayer, it will be 6 o'clock or 6, 5, something like this, 6 ish. Is the timing good to keep it after Maghrib? After prayer? Alhamdulillah. So, pass. Please remember the cameraman also next week. We'll have the occasion. Please, please, pretty please, make advertisement and in, invite, inform your family, friends, anyone you want. Is the majlis for Ummul Ayyama alayhim as Is the mother of Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam. Treat it the way, like, as if it was a majlis for my mother. How would you really go out of your way? How would you invite people? Take it personal. Close to your heart is the majlis of Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu alayhi wa Imam Sadiq alayhi salam says, even us Ahlul Bayt, Imams of Ahlul Bayt, when we have a special need that we want to exclusively appeal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala behaq Fatima to Zahra, sallallahu alayhi wa So inshallah, we want to have a very big uh, uh, and very respectful, inshallah, majlis uh, next uh, Saturday immediately after Maghrib and Isha prayer. Perhaps we won't hold it here, we may go downstairs. About the location, whether it's a location, whether it's here or in the Qa'a downstairs, we will uh, confirm, inshallah. I have to speak with the, uh, with the management. I wasn't in Copenhagen, so I couldn't follow it up. But inshallah, next Saturday, immediately after Maghrib and Isha prayer, Majlis for uh, Fatima to Zahra, Salamullah alayha. Those who can hear my voice, please, uh, inform those who have not heard it and are not around. Barakallah fikum jami'an. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad wa ala aswatikum.